grade sevens. Helen here and that means another natural sciences lesson. I hope you're excited to move on to a new topic today. We're going to be looking at how matter is chemically built up, what the chemical structure of matter is, and we're going to start with our lesson this week, elements. So the first question we need to ask is what is an element? Now I can just give you a definition, but I think we need to unpack our definition a little more slowly and carefully so that you don't get into the position where you just have to learn the definition off by heart, but you truly understand what we mean by an element. So to answer it, we need to do some thinking about the chemical nature of matter and matter that exists all around us, whether it is a human-made material or whether it is a natural material. And this understanding will help us in determining or answering the question, what is an element? So people have actually been doing science since ancient times. What you are doing in your natural sciences class is not new. Early humans investigated plants for food. They investigated rocks and the metal ores that were inside the rocks to make tools and to make weapons. So humans have been studying and experimenting with materials for thousands of years. Which of these materials can burn? Which of them don't burn? We have always, as humans, been curious to understand what makes up the matter all around us. And over the time, scientists have tried to find out what is this matter? What is it made of? I can see my pen. I can see that it's made of metal and there's a little bit of plastic on it. But what is that plastic made up of? What is the metal made up of? If I took this metal and I broke it down smaller and smaller and smaller, what is the smallest particle of that metal that I would discover? So the scientists asking these questions discovered that most of the materials around us are made up of mixtures, and you know very well now what a mixture is, or compounds of different substances that have been chemically joined together, not just physically mixed. So just to remind you of the work we've been doing this term, mixtures are made up of different materials that have been physically mixed together and that therefore we can physically take apart by evaporation or filtration or some other means. Compounds are substances that have been chemically joined together or combined to make completely new materials. So all of these substances around us make up matter, but we need to go to the chemical structure of the matter. We need to see what is this stuff called matter made up out of. So in this section of work over our next few lessons, we're going to be exploring more about the chemical nature of matter. Now you've already started looking at this when you looked at how acids and bases are different kinds of chemicals that react together to make new substances. All chemical substances can be divided into two main groups. The one group we call elements, which of course is the subject of our lesson today, and the other group is called a compound. So now we're getting closer to our definition of element. Elements are pure substances. They cannot be broken down, so they cannot, that's important, be broken down into other substances. They are what we might call simple substances. They only have one kind of matter making up 
that element or that substance. So one kind of matter making up an element. When we talk about a compound, on the other hand, we're talking about substances that are made up of at least two or more elements that have been chemically joined together and when they are chemically joined together they make not a mixture but a completely new substance. So we've got elements that are pure substances and elements can combine together to make compounds and they don't just mix together to make the compounds like water and soil being mixed together in a glass. The two or more elements are chemically bonded or permanently joined to each other to form a brand new substance. So we're looking at the elements today and over the next few lessons and we're looking at these pure substances that we can't break down into other substances. This is our most fundamental kind of matter. It is made up of one substance only. So what are some examples of elements and compounds to help you understand the idea or the concept of elements and compounds? Some examples of elements are oxygen. Pure oxygen only consists of oxygen, nothing mixed with it, nothing chemically combined with it. However, if we look at water, we know that water is a chemical compound that is made up of oxygen and another substance called hydrogen. And if we look back at our element list, we see hydrogen is an element itself. But when we chemically join oxygen and hydrogen together to make a new substance, that new substance is a compound called water. Gold, pure gold, is an element. Carbon is an element. But once again, we could take oxygen and carbon and we could bond them together chemically to form a new substance, which is a compound called carbon dioxide. In studying language, you've come across words that we call compound nouns. We take two words, ice and cream, and ice and cream have their own meanings. When we combine those two words together into a compound noun called ice cream, we get a new word that means something very different. So I want you to think of compounds like compound nouns. And elements are the substances that are simple nouns like ice and cream. And when we combine ice and cream together, we get ice cream. Sodium chloride is another compound. You recognize it as table salt, the stuff that you shake on your food to make it taste nice. Sodium and chlorine, for example, are two elements. They have different properties, but when they are combined chemically, they make sodium chloride, which has completely different properties to sodium and to chlorine. Do you know that sodium, the element, will explode in water? Have you ever seen your sodium chloride exploding when you add it to food that's got water in it? Of course not. Chlorine by itself is a poisonous gas. Is your table salt poisonous? Of course not. So this is a wonderful example where we can see two elements combine to make a brand new substance that has got completely 
different chemical properties. Now, over time, our knowledge of elements and how they behave has increased. When scientists discover a new element, they analyze it, they investigate it, they see how it combines with other elements in order to produce compounds, and so they work out its chemical nature. And scientists began to discover more and more elements. They also began to notice patterns in the way certain elements behaved. For example, like sodium, there's a group of chemicals that all behave in a similar fashion when exposed to water. They all seem to explode when they come into contact with water. So some of the elements, although they are different, they have very similar properties or behaviors that they can, can demonstrate under certain conditions. And so over time, as scientists started investigating all of these different kinds of elements that they were discovering, they recorded all of their observations. But they needed a way to organize all this information, all of their observations, to make it easier to understand and to help them describe the properties of elements. And I've put three little dots after that sentence to show you more to come. In our next lesson, we're going to look at how the scientists have organized and classified elements in such a way that the elements that behave in similar ways are grouped together and elements that behave in completely different ways are not grouped in the same groups as those elements. So we're going to look at how scientists have grouped elements and how they study elements. But I think for today, you do understand what an element is. But to check up on you and to make sure that you were listening, let's have a quick true or false recap. Let's start here. Mixtures are made of different chemicals joined together. That, I hope you shouted out, is false, remember? Mixtures are just physically combined. They're not chemically joined to each other. Let's have a look at this one. True or false? Elements are pure substances made of only one kind of matter. How do you feel about that? Is it true based on what you've learned today? Or is it false? I hope you were able to say that is true. And that is, for the moment, our definition of what an element is. A pure substance made up of only one kind of matter. Based on that definition, is carbon dioxide then an element? False. It is a compound because it's got carbon in it and oxygen in it, which means that there are two different substances that have been chemically bonded together to make a brand new substance. What about this statement? Elements can be broken down into other substances. I hope that you can safely say that that is false false, we have learned that elements are only made up of one kind of matter. So if something is a pure substance, it can't be broken down into other things that make it up. So we would have to say that elements cannot be broken down into other substances. What we're talking about that can be broken down is, of course, compounds. So Compounds are made up of different elements, but elements are pure substances. Last one. Elements show patterns of behavior. Some kinds of elements behave in the same way. I hope that you mark that one true. So we've just started looking at this idea of elements today, and I hope you join me for our next lesson where we will explore it further. 
Goodbye. 